everybody, it's Friday night and it's time for chaos. Um, you guys like documentaries? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 About docu-series. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Sure. Then have I got one for you. Oh, oh. here we go. Love Maybe you've wreck. seen it. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you've only heard tell of the curious case of Natalia Grace. Mm. No. Have you heard about this? Yes, no. I have. All right, so I just finished season two. I won't tell you if there's going to be a season three or not, but it you. is fantastic. It's great. No, oh. I just, I eat this shit up and it's so, uh, I mean, it's so done just to keep you watching every single episode. Uh, <laughs> there's 12 episodes all together. They're about an hour long and it's about, I, I, without spoiling anything, it, this family adopted a uh, a little girl from the Ukraine uh, who had dwarfism and um, over the course of, again, I don't want to spoil anything, over the course of a certain amount of time, they believe her to be an adult posing as a dwarf and go through this process to try and re-age her to an adult and uh, like let her fend for herself. But then there's all these other allegations of like abuse and no, she actually was a child and you've got to see it. It is so... Yeah. Eminently watchable. I uh, I, I highly recommend. The dad is so unhinged. The dad is so <laughs> off What's the wall. On? It's on Max. It? Uh, on Max okay. or yeah. HBO or whatever they call it now. Um, and it is uh, it's great. I mean, it's just like you you watch it and you. There's so many people you hate and there's so many people you're just like <laughs> waiting for them to get their comeuppance. And then the whole time, you know, until a certain point. But even then, you're like just constantly trying to figure out who's in the wrong and what the real story is. And to me, that's yeah. a mark of a, of a great doc. You guys have any other, uh, any other wrecks? Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Specifically oh, in the docu-series genre? Yeah, something you've watched uh, lately that's really- uh, Well, what's the one that's really with? popular right now that's like uh, the cult and she, it's not narrow at all. Um, Nixon? And they found her the like one? zombified. The cult the of Mother God. The one where she yeah. drank so much silver. Yeah, yeah. That, that part was interesting. Whoa. But like that one got a lot of hype and it was good, but it got so much hype that when I watched it, I was like, well, they never explained how they took her eyeballs out. Um, I feel like, I feel like we're yeah. missing a lot of this introductory deep, into the description. It's a deep analysis of the mummification <laughs> yeah, process. Yeah, like the wow. intro scene was like, this is a mummified person in a room. And then it goes backwards to like, this is how the cult started. And this is her background. And then it just like ends and it never explains how they mummified her. Like, mm. <laughs> and I was interested in that. What channel is this on and what is it called? I'm that, ending this call to go watch it. I think it's on Hulu. <laughs> I, think I think it's, it's called is, Love Has Won. Is that on, oh, yeah. wait, is that on Netflix? I think it's on Netflix. I think it's on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a Netflix one. Netflix. The Cult Love, of Mother God. Yeah. The Love Has Won. Mother God. Right? And that's that, an odd yes. sort of cultic group because like a lot of it was conducted only on the internet. But there was like a tiny cadre of people around her. And yeah. their dynamic yeah. was just kind of this mutually – there was another toxic one cycle. There was another one that I watched right before that. I don't remember the name of it. Maybe someone else has watched it. That um, it's another cult one, but this one was better in my opinion. They were like, it was all about twin flames. Or oh whatever. yes, the I twin saw flames. That one. That one yeah. was I missed this. I watch every Escaping, cult one. That Escaping one went twin flames. Like you thought you knew what it was like halfway through, and then it just like gotta write this down. Flips upside down. And you're like, they did what to people? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love a cult docu series. Oh have you, yeah. yeah. I mean, have, have any of you seen the one on the the cult One Taste? No, no. One oh, Taste, have I not another seen one. These. Is that a boy band? Of course, Ross knows like the really obscure. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a. It sounds like a boy band, doesn't it? It was sort of like started as like a relatively innocent sort of yoga thing, but it, but it. I mean, it always is. We're 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 treading now into into risque territory. So yeah, viewer, what is it? The, the first result says One Taste, the orgasm cult. Yes, it was oh, it was shit. mainly okay. devoted to people Damn. unlocking the potential of their orgasms and like mm -hmm. uh people having like orgasms that last for hours and um but believe it or normal? not I'm sorry <laughs> Is that not normal? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> to, 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 to ascended humans like Rob, this is uh, <laughs> it's very I, I mean, so right right now. <laughs> where he's not riding the waves of climax, but the, the one taste people will teach you how to reach Rob's level. <laughs> and, but yeah, believe it or not, there was some shady stuff going on. Shocking, yeah, I know. Get right out of here. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, good Man. cult doc is great because you watch it happening and you're like, this, they're going to end up in a cult. 
Just you watch. <laughs> I don't think I've done one since the Jinx. That's the last big one that I'm I'm behind. Wow, you are very behind. That's the one that yeah. kind of reignited the love of uh, <laughs> cult stuff. I was like, it's never getting better than this. I'm out. Or Dockies, oh, yeah. rather. Um, I mean, another classic. Have you... They're coming to take me away. Right? <laughs> that's, yeah. the, that's the orgasm, people. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you're sharing our secrets. Oh, uh, okay. One taste is coming to take me to their fucking orgasm bunker. Give me 45 minutes and we're taking you away. Oh, the promo clip that we're going to air for this episode. Is gonna- yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you all seen The Staircase? Staircase like, oh, that is I heard great. The OG. I that one. That yeah. is Classic. fantastic. And uh, man, I wish we could just talk about it. I'm curious, like, do you think you did it? Um, oh, it's great, and they made a, uh, a a live action version of it with Colin Firth, right? As right. Uh, the guy. Oh, that yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why I've heard of it. Oh. Yeah, are we? Is it is it allowed on like YouTube or whatever for like us to do a live watch and like comment as we're watching? Because that would <laughs> some, be fun. I just some don't videos know are allowed, some aren't. Like uh, I think if it's on Amazon Prime, you can do it on Twitch because they have a partnership. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but okay. uh, I don't know. I imagine there's different rules for YouTube. It fall if it falls under YouTube's peer view, you might be able to. Um, what about the keepers? If you want to get real dark. Oh, I've seen that one. Too. Catholic Church kind oh. of dark. Oh yes, that one. yes, yes, yes. yes. That one. No thanks. Oh, it's on Netflix. Yeah. Yep, really, really upsetting. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, we've been talking about a lot of dark stuff, but in order to cleanse our palate, perhaps, I, (laughs) I, you want to talk obscure, relatively obscure on on Criterion or whatever? Look up the documentaries of Less Blank. These are the best documentaries I've ever seen, and they 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 they're basically about hyperfixations on something really small and innocent. So there's one called Garlic as Good as 10 Mothers, which is a documentary all about <laughs> people who love garlic a lot. There's okay. one called Gap Toothed Woman, which is all about the beauty of g- g- having a gap between your two front teeth. There's some um, one called Yum Yum Yum, which is all about Cajun cooking. And there's a whole bu- <laughs> and there's a whole bunch like of like music length? ones. Or are they they're, short? They're, they're about 20 minutes long each, but Perfect. they were all sh- most of them were shot in the 70s, and they're just great like little oh, time cool. capsules, and they're really endearing and uh, and and sweet. Wow, right? well that sounds good, but no murder and sex. No murder. <laughs> <laughs> Very no much. Some of some of the uh, music ones are a little are a little r- raunchy. Yeah, I mean, you just Google like best cult docs ever, and uh, I mean, there's just five of them you've seen, and five of you, ha- five you haven't, and uh, makes you just want to. What makes it so watchable? I think it's because like you don't want to be in a cult, right? Let's just right. assume that no one in this group wants to be in a cult. All right. However, you kind of want to attend a meeting just to see these people up close and be like be kind of courted you know what i mean to kind of see what it's like like how what happens where it's just like is you think it's a need for like belonging a need for connection and it's just Mm -hmm. that's provided to you and then it's like it's all of a sudden you're branding your friend like how it takes years to get to that point but uh, yeah we we live in a chaotic world where people are very atomized and lonely and having a system that provides for you a totalizing way of seeing the world and a community that's going to be like, hey, you're amazing. You're the best. Yeah. And a set of rules that tell you that you're succeeding within this very constrained um, uh, little community. I think is I think everybody's susceptible. Yeah, because you could see like the Manson family, right? These were like runaways and strays. And it was like, come here, we'll be the fam- family that you don't have. But then you've got like Nixium and stuff where they were mm-hmm. like highly educated people yeah. in these things. Like they were yeah. like, doctors. and uh, yeah. Or like Heaven's Gate. So many of those people were like academics and scientists. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Well, there's always like a level of vulnerability involved, like no matter like. I guess their background or like their education, it's like if they're at a point in their life where like they just got into a car accident and it totally like messed up their life or shook them up. And now they're in this vulnerable spot where someone can swoop in and be like, I've got all the answers. And it's, it's your twin flame. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) That one is, I'm watching that tonight. Only we can tell you who it is. Did you guys ever get into uh, how to with John Wilson? Also on Max? No, that no. is amazing because every single episode he ends up finding some group of weirdos that have found their own little niche group. I mean, it's not like every episode, but I feel like he finds like the scaffolding union or he finds <laughs> the, the guys who want to like, like 
who got circumcised but are trying to reverse circumcision themselves or something. Yeah, they could do that. Or the Avatar. The, he finds people that are like so an Avatar they know how to speak Navi. Right. They, like, who yeah, wants to like, like 10 of them that they get together. Or like the people who love vacuums. Like yeah. he just always ends up inserting himself in these amazing my, niche groups. This is a spoiler, so feel free to skip ahead. But in the very last episode, one of my favorites of these is he finds a group of people that are into cryogenic freezing. Mm-hmm. And all of them are have signed on to this company to have their bodies frozen to be thawed out in the future when when utopia has risen and it's but it just looks like a convention that like a sales convention yes. <laughs> and, I've got and, like brochures and stuff and he goes and sees some of the tanks some of which are shaped like coffins but some of which are shaped like hat boxes and he's like so are these just are these just yes the heads those are just the heads and um <laughs> but my favorite part is there's an entertainer at the convention who sings a parody song of please please me uh the beatles please please me as please freeze me <laughs> <laughs> please. please freeze me oh yeah and i'll freeze you, you. please please freeze it's me. amazing <laughs> uh i i i'm, I'm kind of into that listen you get thrown in a box you're just gonna rot you get burned you're not coming back from that you get frozen there's a chance there's a chance but what do you do what else could you do with that money well that's the thing if it, <laughs> it, the cost makes it a you. little tricky yeah but everlasting that's future life? me's problem right <laughs> Yeah. Maybe you could invest in the in the company and you get like a freebie you know, or you can yeah. like bring, bring a friend. I think that's what they actually do. <laughs> it's, it's all about cheating death. You know, it's, it's, it's in human nature. And you know who else did that? The, the, the Egyptians, pharaohs, pyramids, Speaking of which, et cetera. That's Speaking why you get paid the big bucks. Of <laughs> which. We, uh, we ended last week on a, a rather abrupt cliffhanger, um, but I just thought it tied in really well to where the beginning of the episode started, and I was like, get out. Once you get that that cliffy run. And, uh, oh, man, where do we start? Where do we start from last week? I got to look at my Michael notes, uh, because the, God, there's just so much going on. I hope you guys have several journals uh, where you with handwritten or in crayon with everything that's going on. We start off last week's app... We're going to get into cults in a second. We're talking about cults. I mean, cults are a huge part of Call of Cthulhu because there are people who truly believe that there are these these elder gods, these outer gods, these beings that uh, transcend humanity, that predate humanity, uh, transcend time and space, and that they are coming. And if you just pray to them, uh, that they you'll be saved while everybody else is wiped out. The difference is in this game, those beings really do exist. And so you dealt with this in New York. You dealt with the uh, the cult of the bloody tongue. And now at the end of last episode, you hear about this other cult. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The episode begins with Margot and Feyruz in the Waldorf in London, while Carter and uh, Vaughn are in Snoozeville, hearing a sound, coming to the living room, seeing a being sitting in a high back chair, approaching said being with a lamp and a remote control. I can't remember what Margot had. <laughs> And all of a sudden, the room gets like shifted around, and you are in an Egyptian temple, perhaps. And this being is still sitting in a high back chair, but at the top of a dais. And it is a being that is composed of pure blackness, except for the gold uh, clothing, robes, and headdress that it wears. You're in this temple, and you watch it reaches out its arm to you, and you're like trying to withstand against whatever power it's exercising. But Margot looks down, and her clothing is starting to rip, and she is starting to change into some sort of being. It's got purple skin, leathery purple skin, uh, wings or something start to burst out of her back, and Feyruz just watches in stunned silence. Carter and Vaughn, you come out, you don't see any of this. You just see Feyruz with her eyes in the back of her head, floating slightly off the ground, and Margot just like silently ripping at her skin and her clothes. You shake them out of it and find out what they see. That's the morning of day two in England. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you really get into how much time we've spent, it's like, oh my god! Um, it was only yesterday we were chopping up a lizard lady. <laughs> just the day before, you were chopping up a lizard lady and bringing a stranger to an asylum. Uh, so that's the morning of day two, or the sort of overnight of day two into day three. So you wake up on day three and you have a meeting. Um, you have a meeting uh, with uh, Edward Gavigan 
the director of the Penhu Foundation. Um, but before then, you try to make a call back to Scotland Yard to set up a meeting with Inspector Barrington. This is someone that not only Jackson Elias spoke with, but also um, you, you see that like Elias was interested in these Egyptian murders that Barrington was involved with um, because it was one of the articles that Jackson had pulled when he was hanging out with old Mickey Mahoney at the scoop. So you get there early on purpose to the Penhu Foundation because you want to look in the library. You're like, there's a great library here. Well, you should probably check it out. Uh, Mr. Thomas Kinnery, uh, Gavigan's personal assistant, greets you. It's like, you're early. Oh, you want to lose the library? Sure. Go ahead. While doing so, um, you feel, uh, I think it's uh, Feyruz gets the sense that there could be really important information here. Maybe information that connects to the vision that you saw um, in that I want to say dream, but it felt all too real. It actually felt more real than any dream you've ever had. So as you're looking, I think it's Vaughn, you fumble a roll and you rip one of the books. The curators come in and like look in horror at you. You go in and you meet Gavigan. Uh, Gavigan, there's this moment where he like notices his safe is open. He's like, I'm sorry, can't ever be too careful. He closes it and you begin talking to him. Meanwhile, Carter and Feyruz fake having to go to the bathroom. They're on the same pee cycle uh, because you want to get back in that library. You feel like you need more time. You talk to Gavigan. He explains that he did meet with uh, Jackson Elias. that Jackson was just interested in knowing more about the Carlisle expedition and what Penu uh, had to do with that. And, you know, Gavigan kind of tells you what you already knew uh, about the investigation, explains a little more about like what happened in Kenya, that they were just like taking a, a break and, and they went too far and then got killed. Um, you try to press a little bit further and you get the sense that maybe Gavigan isn't being completely forthcoming about not only information, but maybe these artifacts that came back, um, whether or not they're actually here or in Egypt, or if they're available to be seen, he's being a little weird about it. You press, you press, you press. He's like, you know what? Let's, we'll make a, we'll make an appointment sometime once I have that stuff available. But you just get the sense that like, for whatever reason, he may not be telling you everything. Maybe it's not none of your business, but either way, you're curious investigators. You want to know. Meanwhile, Feyruz finally finds something in the library, uh, a, a, a note from a page that looked like pages were ripped out of it from a book called uh, Proceedings on the Antiquities Service of Lower Egypt, a page that mentions a black pharaoh. That's odd. You just had a dream that maybe there was a black pharaoh. You discuss uh, the Egyptian village of Saqqara that is mentioned um, in the passage. And uh, you sort of make plans to come back and stake this place out at night and find out, like, what's going on here? What are the comings and goings? Speaking of comings and goings, as you leave, as you are politely escorted out, you notice a truck drive around to the back. Seem place seems pretty secure. There's some shady looking dudes in the truck. You follow around kind of nonchalantly. You see on their truck, it says Ferris and Sons. You go to the back of the building and you see that a crate is being loaded onto that truck. Feyruz notices one of the guys might be Egyptian, starts flirting with him a little bit. Uh, once he finds out that you're engaged, he, he blows you off and uh, goes back to the truck and you guys just keep walking. Then you head to Scotland Yard. You meet with Inspector Barrington, um, who expresses his uh, sadness over the loss of your friend and says, yes, I met with him. Um, He was very interested in these Egyptian murders. And we end the episode by him saying that Jackson believed that the murders were being done by a cult called the Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. And that's where we end this ep. I want to start with Rob. Rob, what do you think <laughs> is going on here? <laughs> For our audio audience, Rob left. Um, <laughs> he was fed up with this adventure. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, before we dig in, because I could just jump right back into Inspector Barrington uh, sort of role play here. You guys have any thoughts, questions, anything you want to discuss? If not, we can, just, we can start doing funny voices. I feel like, um, to me... It's still kind of all over the place, but we're slowly getting to like, we've at least had like three repeating the Black Pharaoh, the Black Pharaoh. So I'm like, oh, something's gonna, we're gonna figure something out yeah. like now or ish. I don't know. It's we're too, uh, we're, we're, I feel like I there's three things I want to explore. And that, if we're gonna break into that, uh, back into that institute, one mm-hmm. is what was being shipped 
like that we saw being brought in. What's behind that red door? Because mm-hmm. it's been mentioned a few times, and now I'm curious. And three, what's in the safe? What's in the safe? What's in the yeah. safe? But now we're we're dealing with two mentioned cults here. Yeah. With the bloody tongue and cult oh. of the black pharaoh, and how are they interconnected? And um, part of me is also like. As soon as I see a box with the Ferris and Sons um, Mm -hmm. uh, box truck, I'd love to see about them as well. But also uh, thinking back to Juju House and how they were receiving shipments from overseas. (gasps) Are these Mm. are these all these places connected through lines of of uh, the supply chain? Um, Mm -hmm. I wonder. Rob, we were just uh, kind of going back and forth before we jump back into the Inspector Barrington talk to try to get a feel on like where your head is at. What what what, it, what what really interests you? What's sort of jumping out at you right now? Things you want, leads you want to pursue? Breaking into that place. I mean, that's just it's <laughs> where Carter's most comfortable, baby. I was gonna say, I feel like your character would shine. <laughs> it's been a while uh, since we peed on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> break in. <laughs> Uh, but the most pressing question that I've also, it's its now bothering me, is what freaking phone number did we put on our business cards? We keep moving around. Right. How do, how, what, <laughs> what's, what's the contact oh, yeah. info? Yeah. Is it just Jonah Kensington? Does everything direct it back to Jonah? Oh, that's mm. smart. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's wise. That, that would be the, the way. I also, it's a way to, uh, to not uh, give away where we're currently sleeping. In mm-hmm. case anybody f- tries to murder us, Waldorf, yeah. room 416. Yes. <laughs> Come visit yeah. anytime. Yeah. Here's Do our sleep send. schedule and doors yeah. our fears. <laughs> Do not send dragons. Thank you. <laughs> Come no sit dragons, in our high backed chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the hardest thing with especially a campaign like this is like there is a lot of information and it's thrown out there in a way that some of it is significant, some of it is insignificant, and some of it is you think it's one thing and over time you're going to find out it's something else. And also, I think there's this impetus because we come from a D&D Pathfinder world. It's like, now we know who the enemy is. Let's get him. When like you can't, you're, you're regular human beings. You can't do that because you could get killed. So you have to make sure you have enough uh, evidence so you feel really certain not only that like so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, something's not right with them, but like you know exactly, or you, I guess you can't really know exactly, but you feel very confident that like, I think we know like what's going on here. We need to now act because if you act too soon, sometimes you can just like walk right into your death. And so it's really, really tricky. However, I will say over the last two episodes, you've taken in so much information that it'll be interesting to see how it blossoms today. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to pick right back up with Barrington. Barrington, you're talking to him about, so you met with the, Jackson Elias. He's like, yeah, I, was, I talked with him briefly. He was very interested in these Egyptian murders. He believed they were ritual killings uh, conducted by a, an Egyptian death cult known as the Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. And he'll continue to say, um, frankly, I, 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 was, I was pretty desperate then, and uh, I, I, I am still desperate now for leads. Uh, so I followed up and that's uh, part of the reason why I, I took uh, a meeting with you once you said that you were, were, were friends with Elias. Uh, one of the things that I regretted is not having more time to talk to him. Anyways, I got in touch with a, uh, the Penhu Foundation. This is a local organization here in London with connections uh, to Egypt. I wanted to see if they could corroborate any of Elias's information. Are you familiar with the foundation? Yes. We've had the pleasure. Yes. Uh, the pleasure. You've visited the Penny Foundation. Um, yes, we, we've um, even had a meeting with uh, Mr. Gavigan and his uh, mysteriously unnamed factotum uh, only earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just came from there. Really? Well, yeah. um, I met with Mr. Edward Gavigan as well, and uh, I spoke to him about uh, my suspicions, and he confirmed that a society calling themselves the Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh had once existed long ago in ancient Egypt, uh, but that there was no modern day equivalent. Uh, It died out uh, hundreds of years ago. 
So it was at that time during my conversation with Mr. Gavigan that I discovered that Mr. Elias had been in contact with Mr. Gavin again as well. I mentioned to him that uh, I'd spoke with this young man and uh, he had given me this information. So I asked Mr. Gavigan about that meeting and he remarked uh, that um, he believed that Mr. Elias was a sensation sinking profiteer and unlikely to be a reliable source of information. No, I didn't get that impression uh, when Mr. Elias and I spoke. Um, however, he did seem pained by something throughout our entire conversation. I did not see him as a man that was out for any sort of personal gain. He seemed troubled, but he did seem to know things that uh, during the course of my investigation have sort of matched up with some of his theories. And so interesting that you say that because at our meeting at the Penhue Foundation, we weren't able to get much information at all, especially regarding any cult of the Black Pharaoh. Yes, and the, these besmirchments on the character of Mr. Elias um, were certainly not breathed to us, his confidants. And I can say, knowing the man personally, I found him to be a remarkably self-abnegating character, not given at all to self-aggrandizement. Where am I? <sighs> I believe Mr. Gavigan knows more than he's telling. When we were in New York, the cult that, as I say, we we encountered there was committing a series of ritual murders also in that, that locale. There, there were connections uniting them. Um, are there any... I, I understand that you're, you constables are probably not in the habit of giving details of open cases to members of the public, but given that we are intimately acquainted with the details of a rhyming case, so to speak, is there anything that connects the victims of, of the mystery that you're currently unraveling? You can see he's a little hesitant, like he's kind of looking down his papers and uh, shuffling through them a little bit and uh, kind of leaning back. I feel like Maybe, what is your jam here? Almost like you're, the way you're role-playing is very charming. I don't know how your charm I think I'm gonna try is. To, I'm going to try to riff, riff this charm style. Yeah, if it was Carter, I'd say roll a fast talk, but I mean, that that you're charming him. Um, what if Carter doesn't have great persuade. fast talk, just so you yeah. know? Yeah, I'm, persuade to whatever you feel more comfortable with. I'd be fine with either one. You know, he's already made it clear that, like, he's desperate for help in this situation. Yeah. So I think it, it, there's a chance you could persuade or charm him to be a little more forthcoming. I will charm him. It's interesting that, that Vaughn has a has a pretty decent charm score, but a pretty bad persuade score, which tells yeah. me something about like, he's maybe less able to like get you to do something through, through reason and logic and more <laughs> able to get you to do something through the force of his personality. <laughs> um, I think we all know people like that. No yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll that charm. Roll that charm. Roll that charm. Oh, no, that's a fumble. No, I rolled no. 100. What? Oh, what? no. Wait, what? What? I rolled a you know, 100 is, over what? 55. No. Oh, that's a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, an, because you have a 55, a 99 wouldn't have been a fumble. Only a I'm hundred. going to go straight to <laughs> the Tower of London. Oh, no. I am going push? to be hanged. Can you push a fumble? Can you push a fumble? I, oh, I feel, I feel like I always I, do this. I don't yeah, think I you feel can. like it would defeat the can. point. Can. <laughs> I yeah. feel like you can't. Um, Doesn't I'm not seem 100% like you sure. Could. Just vomit um, all over the desk. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I, I, here's what I'll say. That, that's a fumble. So um, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail here because the rest of you are still in the room. But uh, mm. I think that he he really bristles at that. Like at first, maybe I already said he's leaning back and looking at the papers, and he's like, "No, no, no. I cannot. I cannot share the the yeah. the, the, the notes of a an ongoing investigation with with people who, who I don't even know. It's perhaps that uh, you know my conversation with Mr. Elias that that led to his 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 his, his early demise." So no, it's it's for your safety as well as as, as the uh, sort of respect that I have for the job here. So I'm sorry, no, I cannot share with you this very cool information that I have written in my Google. If we Doc. were to come back, it would break the case with, wide open. If we were to come back <laughs> with useful information for you, could we have a quid pro quo situation? Mm -hmm. Would that uh, change your mind? What do you deem as as useful information? Well, that depends on what we find out, isn't it? But also, at the same time, time is of the essence for us. And you said yourself, you wish that you were able to tell Jackson more. 
and help yeah. more. And that's, we're following in his footsteps right now. Here's what I'll say. In terms of the uh, the actual murders and uh, the details of those grisly crime scenes, I, I don't feel comfortable sharing that information at this time. I will tell you some other things. Um, there is a... Um, well, that's capital of you. I'm, I'm, see, there, there's some charm left in... Whoa! <laughs> he falls out of his chair. <laughs> 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 whoa, whoa. His cigarette lights his current on fire. Oh, fire. I'm so sorry. God damn! <laughs> Damnation! Um, there is a um, club in Soho called the Blue Pyramid Club. Yes, this is okay. a club that is often frequented by both resident and visiting Egyptian businessmen. Many of the victims frequented that club. Um, mm. So I looked into it. In fact, I had the place placed under surveillance. Um, but unfortunately, I, I was unable to learn anything before uh, my men were pulled away to attend to other police work. I also interviewed uh, a number of people here in London with connections to Egypt. The vast majority had very little to offer, although a spice dealer by the name of uh, Zara Shafiq interested me. Uh, she runs a little spice shop here in town called Empire Spices, also in Soho. Uh, Shafiq had worked with the Penu Foundation, I learned uh, from Gavigan. Uh, when I spoke with her, she also recognized the name, the Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. Um, but uh, during the course of the interview, um, she uh, she also said that it no longer existed, uh, corroborating what Mr. Gavigan had said. However, as I spoke to her more, something just gave me the impression that there was much she was not saying, not unlike uh, your impression of Mr. Gavigan, although I did not feel that um, when I spoke to Mr. Gavigan. Um, so I, uh, I had her tailed for a few days, um, which confirmed very little. She went to the Blue Pyramid Club, like most of the Egyptian nationals here, um, but very little else. I must have misread the, the situation. However, I'm glad I followed up. Anyhow, that is all I really feel comfortable sharing at this time, and, and while I am, I am grateful for any information you can provide, I should warn you, I don't know what it is you are really up to here, and uh, I will say that excessive zeal could put you in the firing line of the murderer or murderers I'm after. We don't need any foreigners acting like cowboys in our town. Let's leave this to the professionals, yes? Should you find information, you can uh, call me or uh, visit, as it were, set up an appointment as you did here, and Scotland Yard will deal with it. Should you get in too deep, whatever is going on here, you may very well end up like your friend, Mr. Elias. Uh, we've heard this before from cops the world over. And we'll totally listen to exactly what you just told us. Very good. Respect my authority. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, how long does it take to become a, I mean, could we fill out an application and maybe get that rushed through? Just immediately become constables, you know what I mean? Get a little, those little penis hats. Sir, this is an inherited position. Your father had to have been a, uh, been a cop. Prince. It's the only way. It's the only he way is. you can be a policeman here at Scotland Yard. My yeah, great great grandfather <laughs> started this institution. All Anyhow. police, um, all police ranks are passed father to son by right of primogenitor. <laughs> is that not how they do it in America? Yeah. <laughs> uh, very well. Well, you've given us some great leads. Yes, uh, yes, sorry about your chair, old man. Um, <laughs> hope I didn't come off as too, in, too ingratiating <laughs> as he tries to shake his hand and dips his cuff in the ink. <laughs> Blasted fool! Um, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, it's quite all right. I, uh, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, if you do have information, I, I, I would appreciate a call. But do not get too far in. I, this is not a threat. This is a warning. We don't appreciate that nonsense here. Yes, jolly old England. Well, will there be no nonsense? So you can you can count on that. But while we're on the topic of threats, uh, Mr. Barrington, in uh, in New York, we found members of the constabulary who were eminently helpful to our cause. But we also found other aspects of the constabulary that were riven through with the blackest corruption. So. Look, look to your own organization as well. These, these cultists have their habit of paying off the right authorities. And if you found your way stonewalled at any time, 
Um, don't, don't neglect to look in your own backyard. Despite your pathetic ability to charm me, <laughs> I appreciate that advice. If Mr. Elias and you are on to something that this cult actually does exist, then, uh, yes, even though an institution like Scotland Yard is in tip-top shape, that doesn't mean that their tendrils couldn't have dug in here. I will take that advice to heart. I'm, if there's nothing I'm, else. I'm yes? wondering, so when we were in New York, uh, part of the cult that we were uh, looking into one aspect that stood out was that they were getting um, strange shipments. And I'm wondering, with Elaborate. customs and all of that... Um, what kind of shipments? People? Antiquities? Crack! Did, find- <laughs> <laughs> Did we ever find out what was in the shipments? <laughs> Pop open the boxes? Um... We're getting close to Mon Calamari territory here, Troy. <laughs> Please keep going. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I thought you I'm said wondering. Von Calamari. Oh, like, that's, that's still awesome. Von Calamari. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if I know that it's the Penhue Foundation. They're going to have artifacts be delivered all the time, but I'm wondering if there's a connection there, if there's any customs... Forms, if you're suggesting you take a look at. there is some sort of uh, connection between the Penu Foundation and whatever's going on here, I did not uh, get that sense in the least. And uh, I will say, without saying too much, that I have done my own investigation into that. Uh, as comfortable as I felt digging in and saw no connection whatsoever. Mr. Gavigan is an upstanding member of society. And um, even his predecessor, who got tied up in that whole fiasco over there, uh, had a, a completely unblemished record, so I would say you're most likely barking up the wrong hill thinking there's any sort of connection there. Is there anything interesting that you know about Ferris and Sons? Ferris and Sons? He writes it down. Um, what is that, a, a business here? A local business? I, I think so. It was a van a company that was delivering a crate to the Penhue Foundation. Um, when we were waiting for our car to come here, we saw them. Um, okay. Medicine sense. No, uh, you know, as looks I said, a little I, out of place for the. Pl- how so? The how so out of place? Um, just the drivers didn't seem the caliber of professional. I guess. So what you said that they looked suspicious, they but they like, didn't yeah. have the vibe check. Yeah, Margo. yeah. <laughs> These are the vibes. Listen, Barrington. I, I, you I, you understand? <laughs> we've we've done what you might call profiling. Okay. As <laughs> these characters. Um. Well, as I said, I, the, the Penhue Foundation is not a, uh, a target uh, for me, so I wouldn't be concerned with this, but I, I, I'm happy to take any, any lead you have here. Suspicious men uh, perhaps delivering or taking something away. You actually saw them taking a crate away, um, not delivering. Uh, I, I will certainly look into it. There's no such thing as a bad lead here, um, but anyways, Ferris and Sons, all right. Look into that. If there's nothing else, um, you have my card, and you said yours is still being printed, yes? Uh, yes, I'm, I believe I'm, I'll be able to pick it up today. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, in the meantime, if I, if I, I don't see why I would need to reach you, but uh, you said you were staying at the Waldorf in an off sea Between episodes, you mentioned that to me. So I, yes. will, uh, I will contact you, you there if need be. I don't, I don't know why I, I would need to contact you. It's just crazy. So pretty useful, you'll see. In a pinch. Right. Anyway, be sure to the visit event. the Scotland Yard gift store on your way out. There are many collectibles, and um, maybe you would like to give a donation to the uh, Constable Benevolent Association. <laughs> <laughs> I can give I you a sticker. Get one of those foam, we'll get you uh, one of the billy clubs you guys ticket. have. Oh, those are fine. Yeah. Yes, give them to your boys, and they'll beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> With no bruises. All right, have a wonderful day doing whatever you're going to do that isn't suspicious. Cheerio. <laughs> Cheer- cheerio, yes. Frosted Flake. And oh. you leave Scotland Yard. Now, <laughs> some new information is so stupid. <laughs> that fumble was brutal. Brutal. Oh. I hate having like all these juicy paragraphs. I, I can't give it to you. Um, 
You can yeah, well, go back if, without, without well, the ding-dong. Break dong. in there. Find his notes. <laughs> if anything, though, you do get the sense you are inquiring sp- 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 specifically about the murders. Like, is there any sort of connecting motif? Why are they called the Egyptian murders? Is it just because they were all attributed to something else? And you did catch a little... Yeah, there is mm-hmm. something, but I can't share that information with you. So maybe if you do come back with some more information, it might be something he'd be more open to. But he also has warned you to be careful. If you just come back dragging crazy people and dead bodies, like, say a guilty part, you, you could end up in jail. Um, there was a, like a small little threat in there. Mm-hmm. Not only like, be careful, you might get killed, but like, we don't mess around here in England. This isn't New York. I don't know this how you London. do things in New York. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know how you do things in New York City, but this is London. Now, the plan for tonight here, it's Friday night. It's Friday night. You're in London. Hit the clubs. No, you guys want to st- stake out the Penhue Foundation. What time do you want to arrive? Do you want to arrive as like, you know, the business hours are like, uh, I think it was like eight to six. The uh, Egyptian collection cl- was noon to four. Do you want to get there as there's like a, a change in shift or something? Or do you want to like wait till the cover of night uh, and and watch? Um, and what else do you want to do? You also have this Ferris and Sons lead to, to look into if, you, if that's something you want to do. But you don't have to do everything in one day. Right now it's five o'clock. Not even five o'clock. There's no way you were talking to him for an hour. 4.45. Even if we stake out um, by the Penhue Foundation, and if we don't go in, maybe we can still find out something, like a little nugget that we can go back to him with. Yeah. Being like, see, they're they're involved, and then he can tell us some more information. If not, break in. I'd love to break in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is your style. Um, I don't know. I mean, this Blue Pyramid Club... It is Friday Sounds. night. <laughs> yeah, Blue Pyramid Club. Uh, assuming that they're not like a private club, uh, we don't know yet because we haven't been there. Um, and also that Zara Shafiq person who mm-hmm. has a sell spices, which um, you know we're in England, we're going to need to spice our food a little bit, <laughs> so <laughs> we can pick up some spices yes. and maybe get some information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that place is probably cl- if that's a business and it's five. Uh, mm, true, we don't know. They might be. We can check them out. Yeah, we could. We could probably save that for tomorrow, maybe. Um, but maybe, maybe at least see where this blue pyramid club is. Yes. Um, I'm updating great. your uh, your uh, thing over here. You can now see a, a picture of Edward Gavigan. Let's see. Oh, yeah. uh, oh let's see. He looks shifty. Eddie. Hmm? And then uh, I'll also put uh, James James Barrington. It's like John right. Waters without the mustache. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's the mustache. There's the mustache. Oh, well, there's the mustache. <laughs> and there's there the is. mustache. <laughs> Inspector James Barrington. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, yes, um, the voice does match the face. It does. Yes, <laughs> uh, all right, so you tell me. You drive this ship. Okay. Um, Straight into the ground. <laughs> yes, yes, into the rocks. So do we want to try to see where this club is and potentially also get sidetracked or we could divide and conquer maybe a couple of people go to the club a couple of people stake out split the party Uh, (laughs) that's fun it is fun you know when someone dies from it then you know we should do that less and someone will but this isn't like other games oh okay (laughs) I'm not saying this is the way it'll happen it might um, I'm, uh, I'm terrified. Well, I'm basically do you, terrified. Do you of guys want to split, or do you want to just hop over and case one and then go break into another? I just yeah. want to note that I have my shotgun. <laughs> I do have my gun as well. Do we split based on weapons? Our Damage. Weapons? I'm sure they allow weapons also. into the Blue Pyramid Club. Right. Um. Yeah, I'd also maybe like to give Ferris and Sons just a phone call, just to see what their, who answers what they say their line is. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, God. Yeah, what do you... We... Basically, every decision, I, my palms just start sweating at this point. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Let's... Carter, do you want to uh, stake out the Penhue Foundation? Yes, with you, yes. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, Sacred. maybe the uh, the engaged couple then will go check out, call Ferris and Sons, and uh, check out the. You guys haven't had an engagement party. Maybe the uh, night at the Blue Pyramid Club. Hey, there you little, go. Sure. Little dinner um, and dancing. Yeah, sure. and as a. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> ah! All right. Um, cool. Great. <laughs> oh, shit. I love it. Um, <laughs> all right, so Margot and Carter, are you just <clears throat> heading straight over there? Now, or do you want to wait until night? Night. I think we wait a little. Okay. You know, you're the experienced one. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. So I think what we do is we wait until it's dark because here's the thing: when it's dark, it's harder to see. Ah. And that's a key part. I'm told of breaking into places where you don't belong. Have you never? I, oh, to? No, I ha- I mean, just as oh. recently as the Department of Motor Vehicles in its okay. nation form. <laughs> uh, That's also what I thought. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a pro at this. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound like I was talking down or anything. Uh, yeah, I think we want to do that. Maybe we get a drink. Should we get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get a drink, because you'll need a full bladder if you're going to urinate on things. <laughs> the Faerus, that was a one-time thing. <laughs> yes. Until our calling card comes know, through, then that's there. our calling card, I suppose. Yes. While we wait for the sun to go down, get yeah. a drink. Yeah, I just build up some courage. All right. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, all right, I will get back to you on Ferris and Sons, and you will say that you guys all... Um, I'll, I'm, here's what I'm going to say is like you got to find out a little information to try and track down Ferris and Sons I don't know if there's just like a phone book available but I'm going to I'll let you know when you have that information so you can contact them um, it, by the time you got that information it's after business hours so you call and there's no answer okay. um, so you guys go out to dinner and then you go your separate ways to the Blue Pyramid Club uh, to to the Penu Foundation so let's take you to boom, outside the Penu Foundation Margot and Carter arrive via cab. And what are we thinking? You're just kind of going to lay low on the opposite side of the street? Did you get there a few blocks away and you're going to walk up? Talk, a few talk blocks away. This. Oh, yeah. Kind of have some okay. distance. Uh, it's nighttime now, I'm guessing. It's nighttime now, yeah. It's not a very busy thoroughfare, um, so it's pretty easy to skulk up to the building uh, close by to be able to watch. And you see that uh, all the lights are off in uh, the two floor building. And you've got a pretty good lay of the land, so you know like where the entrance is. Obviously Mm -hmm. there's a back fence. um, And uh, you look up at the windows that would look in on the Egyptian collection, all dark. But as you stand there, um, almost 35 minutes into watching, you see uh, light kind of like pass across windows on the second floor. Like a flashlight or a torch, I should say. Kind of looks like a torch, yeah, a flashlight. Um, And then maybe 10 minutes later, you see on the first floor, uh, like right near the front door, lights kind of flash through, looks like a flashlight again. And that's it. Okay. How long do you keep watching like another are you doing like a couple hours of just watching do we yeah like do we see that repeat does it seem like that person is on like a routine if you wait another hour passes and systematically you see the lights on the second floor looks like a looks like a single flashlight Uh uh-huh and then again and right around Well, no, that's all I'm going to say. That's fair. All right, Margo, what we got here is your standard single security guard. Mm-hmm. He's doing what we call making the rounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just checking to make sure there's no funny business going on inside of there. Ooh, um, she goes into her bag and she takes out a pair of her pantyhose. She goes, like, uh, <laughs> that's this. <laughs> Put put over our faces, my uh, like o- opaque black. Oh, uh, uh, put it over our face. That's to, uh, so we don't get r- recognized. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. The, the, oh. Right. This is what you do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Norm. I mean, for the, the in the cat burglar world, it's more of a it's more of a tight knit cap. Uh, well, but, I have but lots I think, of stocking. Yes. Okay. Um, there you go. She rips it in half and gives you one of the legs. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we can put these on when we get when we get closer. Uh, cool. We gotta figure out a way to get in. Um, and it looks like we've got a bit of a schedule here that we can see. Um, I'm wondering if maybe uh, Troy. I, the so the whole back of the building where we saw the truck pull in. Mm-hmm. That's all like the same complex, right? It's like yeah, if that you guys, loading dock is. If you go around to the back and look through now, you don't see any truck back there. It's just mm-hmm. an iron fence, and the iron fence goes all the way around, but there's a gate opening here and a gate opening in the front that was open when you guys came in. That's how you got to the front door. Right. But you look through, and you see the loading dock, uh, and there's a door that leads directly in. You also see stairs um, off to the east that look like they go down like to perhaps a basement or something okay uh all right i i think our best bet is to try to sneak in through the back here okay it's my, my so uh, what, what's on this gate is there like a padlock kind of situation yeah it looks pretty heavily padlocked um and also you think like if you try to unlock it you 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 might be able to get through but you would want to probably relock it um, so you don't draw attention. Um, yep. so you could either scale or try to crack this padlock, but it looks pretty heavy duty. No, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do this padlock. Okay. Give me a uh, locksmith roll. Yes, I will. That's oh wait. So, so exciting. Did we do did we do luck? Did everyone oh, did? We didn't. No. We didn't. Yes, do a luck. A great. Do a little luck upgrade hopefully little for some of you. Luckaroo. I swear to god. Luckaroo. And ah, finally, my day has come. You want to succeed this, right? You want to get under? Ideally, under would be good, yeah. I failed. Ideally, but per the rules, yes. Wait. No, no, fail. you want to fail this one, you want to get okay. over it. I thought you oh, meant the luck. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait okay, a great. second. Yeah, fail is good. So, Feyruz, you're good. Yeah, you okay. failed. Oh, and I roll a D- nice. D10. Ten. Oh, you needed this, Feyruz. Oh, I did. I spent oh, a lot man, of Oh, man, I'm back in the... Episode. I've been not being able to gain, even though I only have single digits the last few episodes. Whoa. And I got a 10. Oh, nice. All right. You needed that. Nice. Eight for me. Great. I got seven. Give me a locksmith roll. I plan on it. Here we go. Oh, this isn't as good as I thought it was. Oh, 46 under 48. Yeah. Motherfucker. 46 under 48. Um, all right. So, in the worlds of in the world of locksmithing, you like you hear like one of those uh, little uh-huh. drums pop up. So you're like halfway there. Uh-huh. Give me a follow up roll. Oh shit! That's this is the type of thing that I like forgot. if you really fuck up, it would be it'll be unpickable. Okay. All right. So you're like halfway there, steady hand. Margo, I got the first. Just so you know, I just want to walk you through the drama that's oh, playing out right now. It's very I got exciting. one. Yeah, I got one portion of this. I'm going to do it again, okay? Okay. Here we go. Jesus Christ. I got a 62 over 48. I'm going to spend luck. Spend luck, and you unlock the gate. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so that's 14, right? Yes, okay. My math sucks. There's so much math. <laughs> <laughs> so much simple math. All right. That was uh, almost, yeah, that was almost the luck that I gained the last two sessions. Great. But uh, you've got that, and you don't have to worry about climbing and falling yep. and hurting yes, yourself. You get that. through. Now walk me through what you do here and, and, and be specific. You've got a lock. You've got a big fucking lock in your hand, and the chain just, you grab it before it makes too much noise. Okay. Uh, yeah, per your suggestion, uh, the wonderful keeper that you are, I re kind of. We get it, crack open the gate, sneak through, and try to close it and put the lock back on. I pull the pantyhose over my head. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, let's do this. Let's go to a map. I have a map of the Penny Foundation. Oh, shit. Okay. You guys see that? Yep. All right, so I'm going to put little Carter... Little Margo at the back that gate. That is a there. little Carter and Margo. 
There you are in the back. Now, I've, I've basically revealed here everything that you've seen of the venue foundation. Oh, so shit. you've seen this back area. This is where the car was. Feyruz really is the one that saw it, but you have a collect collective view of it. You've seen the hallway um, that leads up to uh, Kinnery's waiting area and Gavigan's office, which are on the uh, the eastern portion of the thing. I said that these the stairs leading down below the building were to the east. They're actually to the west. Um, so there is a staircase as well that leads down, presumably under the building. Oh. Um, and then uh, the other two rooms in the uh, the south of the building here are the restrooms, the men's room on the right. Familiar. Women's room, women's room on the left, you found those. And then uh, to your left is the uh, second floor and the entire Egyptian collection is, has been revealed. And then all those other little doors looked like uh, areas that you weren't allowed to go into, study areas, perhaps the where people were researching and whatnot. And you came up with the staircase to the north, which is uh, mirrored on the first floor there. So this is mainly just to kind of Show me what you want to do. Which, uh, Troy, which which of these uh, doors was that red door that led uh, to the... Um, I'm pinging it right here. It is the door okay. just to the north of Kinnery's office or way the Fantastic. waiting area. We're on that, so we're on that side of the building already. Yeah. And, and so there's the loading dock, which is right next to that staircase leading down. And then there's a door that is like the back door that leads directly into the hallway. And the red door is right there. And then also the staircase leading up to the uh, Egyptian collection. Okay. Was the library we were in in the Egyptian collection upstairs? The library did not reveal that. <laughs> Way to point out Got the him. one room I forgot! <laughs> uh, that is um, right across the hall. Um, so I'll reveal that as well. Kind of across the hall from uh, Mr. Kinnery's office. It's a library there. Okay. Um, on the so western we portion. The west side of the hallway. There's all sorts of other little rooms. Um, as well. A lot going on. Big building. What do you do? What do you think? There's a safe. There's a red door. Oh, the safe. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's one more thing. There was well, one more? I'd like to clarify my previous statement about this padlock. Uh, I don't want to lock it. Just, I just realized in case we have to like bail and get out of here, it would suck to have padlocked ourselves into <laughs> this <laughs> giant courtyard. So I want to like hook it and make it look as close to being closed uh, okay. while still able to just rip it open if we need to. For sure, for sure. You're basically you, you're not Your leaving Honor. it wide open with the chains right, right. down. Yeah, if anyone's attention. walking by, they're not going to be like, oh shit, some fuck with that lock. Uh, right. <laughs> we're going to keep it. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I think uh, if there's a way to stick to the shadows along this wall here, the wall closest to us, to the <laughs> west. Okay. Kind of play the Pink Panther theme song if you could. <laughs> there you go. Alright, all right, Margo, follow me here. Stick to oh. the shadows. I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to put your <laughs> pantyhose on my head now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this going along. And then like, as we're kind of walking along, I'm just like, so what was the deal with that guy that came to visit you at the hospital? <laughs> Weeks ago. <laughs> But, you know. Gun- Gunter? Gunter, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he, what's his situation? <laughs> right to now? I mean, <laughs> no, no, it's, you're right, you know, we don't have to talk about it now, it's fine. It's I mean, sometimes. Should we be talking out in the court? You just when I'm at my most comfortable is while I'm about to break into a place. I'm sorry, we had, we had dinner. Okay. Right before this. It's just sort of a long distance thing going on, huh? And he, he was my teacher. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Oh, we don't have he's, to talk. About he's he's my friend. That's great. Just friends. Great. Here we go. There's a door here. <laughs> uh. Okay. So should we? I don't know. Should we go downstairs here or? Well, there's the red door. Yep. There's the safe, and we saw him go through the first floor already. So he might be gone. Okay. Yeah. We'd like to. I think Troy, uh, Kate, tell me. If you have different thoughts, I feel like we go through this back door, the main back door, uh, timed once we've known that he's sort of with the information we've gathered. I'm only worried if there's an alarm on that door because it seems like a oh, door shit. door, you know? They have alarms in the 20s. Do they? I mean, not everything <laughs> needs Probably. to be electric. It's, yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> the door is tied to a chicken that yells. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> it's a string on the leg. Yeah. <laughs> Well, why, yeah. don't we, why don't we, why, let's try to go through this door that leads down 
And then maybe we can find our way back up. It's because Troy said there's a door that goes to, like, the basement. You want to go to the basement? And then we'll come up through the basement. Okay. You, got, you made me paranoid about this back door. Let's just do the back door. The I think we can do the back door. <laughs> Let's do the back door. We'll do a spot hidden for an alarm or something. I'm sure yes. we'll nail it. All right. So you go to the back door, and as you approach the back door, you feel, um, both of you feel like something drip on your head. Drip, drip, drip. And then you put your hand out, and it starts raining. And then we cut to Vaughn and Feyruz getting out of a cab um, in Vaughn, of Soho. Vaughn, holds the umbrella out. To... <laughs> the old umbrella for your um, fiancé to step out. And Vaughn, you um, would probably know that the Soho area has long been notorious for its pubs, drunken revelers, illegal brothels. It's kind of like a, a seedier area of London. Um, but you take the cab to 12B Meard Street and you see a green grocer's shop at ground level and then above the green grocer's shop on the second floor, the upper floor of the building, uh, there's a sign for the Blue Pyramid Club. And we'll be back right after this quick break. Hey, what's going on? Hope you're enjoying season two of Time for Chaos, sponsored by our good friends at Chaosium, the publisher of Call of Cthulhu. And they just came out with a brand new book, Call of Cthulhu Arkham. This is a fully updated version of the old H.P. Lovecraft's Arkham source book. It is the city at the center of it all. Miskatonic University, a bunch of mass holes fighting monsters, and you can get it for 10% off if you go to chaosium.com and use code TFC at checkout. That's TFC, stands for Time for Chaos, 10% off this brand new book, Call of Cthulhu Arkham, and you know what? While you're at it, why don't you throw 50 other books in there? 10% off? The more you spend, the more you get off. Thank you to Chaosium, and thank you to you who are stopping everything you're doing right now and going to Chaosium.com and buying this and so many other great books. In fact, why am I doing this ad? I'm going to go use this code, too. I didn't say I couldn't use the code. Go, go do it. I'm going to go do it, too. Still relying on digital dice rollers for your random number generating needs? There has to be a better way. Now, there is. With the new Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice sets, you can generate random numbers right on the table. No more hassling with smartphone apps or programs on the internet. No more judgmental stares from the Matthews of the world. And now when you meet that special someone out at the club on a Friday night and they ask you if you own any sets of gemstone dice, you can say yes on your way to sex town. Get your Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice set today at glasscannonnetwork.com slash store. But order now. Quantities are extremely limited. Except for Joe Dice. We have plenty of Joe Dice. During the break, I was thinking... Um before we jump back in that uh, maybe I've never been able to quite verbalize this before or maybe I haven't I'm just being repetitive I'm, I'm getting older and I'm forgetting what I've already said but one of the reasons I love this game um, more so than other games honestly it really is my favorite game even though it's it's wildly stressful to do a campaign <laughs> of this size I do enjoy it, and I'm so happy when we like finish an app and I'm, I'm happy when you guys have fun one of the things that I really like about it arguably my favorite thing is that I come into these sessions with an idea of what you guys are going to do and it very rarely follows that plan and so like I'm both um, observer and audience member while also being an active participant so like I know the Uber story but I don't I'm watching it unfold in front of me and then just trying to do my best to to keep up with it. But uh, I think that's what makes it so much... Um, it, it really strikes a nerve with me more so than other games is that uh, running it, I feel like I never know what's going to happen next. Whereas other games, you kind of know. Like, you're going to hit the enemy or you're going to miss the enemy. Here, it really feels cinematic. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm just... 
I was just thinking that as we took a little break, like why, something I really love about this game, that discovery. Uh, it stresses me out though, because like as an OCD like control freak, I like to have everything be a little bit more mm -hmm. polished. But you kind of the more you try to polish, the you get away from the heart of this game. And so, all this to say, I'm going to miss these uh, characters at the God end. God damn it! <sighs> um, you're 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 saying like we're like you're about we're about to die or something like. I know, oh, I'm just I'm just really going to miss you guys. This is the last episode. TPK. Uh, Another point, um, Michael threw this in. Uh, he did some some research here during the the break on a fumble. You can push the roll so long as you follow the other requirements of a pushed roll. Um, it, it doesn't say anything about a fumble, so you could have technically pushed that. And then I argued that like, well, if you fail a pushed roll, I really bring the hammer down. It's like, get out of my oh, office! Yeah. Don't you ever come back here again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this We're really, <laughs> you want to feel that <laughs> risk of a push. Yes, like, absolutely. Oh. Great. Um. Any poop, let's have you all outside of the Blue Pyramid Club, decorated with Egyptian motifs. And you also see a smaller sign um, that says members only. Mm. The uh -oh. surrounding area looks to offer many cheap eating houses and coffee shops. It's a place called the Moorish Cafe. There's the Algerian. Um, everything looks fashionable and trendy. There are people sitting outside writing in their journals or like maybe um, want to be artists like drawing. You know, it's it's kind of like what Soho uh, was uh, post 9-11 in uh, New York. Um, Soho here, just a little bit more run down, although with a certain charm to it. You see there's a couple windows on the second level, um, but only one door uh, at ground level. And uh, you see a man standing at the door. Um, he's now like behind the door, so he's covered by the rain. And it looks like behind them there's a staircase leading up. Hmm. What do you do? Well, it would appear as though it's members only. However, it wouldn't hurt to at least see what the, requ the requirements of membership are. And perhaps if the place isn't, or the doorman isn't too, uh, in a ways, maybe he will at least give us a little bit of the history of the club, maybe some of its notable members. We're all good at chatting people up. Yes, maybe for people as devastatingly charming as ourselves, they'll waive the membership obligation. And um, exactly. I'll, we'll just kind of walk over to the doorman and um, you know, just give him the full core press. Uh, excuse me, old man. Uh, the let's see the uh, Blue Pyramid Club. Um, might might we uh, might we dip in? But of course, good evening. Um, may I see your membership cards? Hmm. Here's the thing. <laughs> uh, my dog, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my fiance and I just got engaged. Congratulations. And thank you. Yes. And uh, while we are here, we, we... You are very lucky, sir, if I may say so. Uh, you, you needn't tell me, my good man. <laughs> I'm reminded each and every day. You, I hope you have many beautiful children. <laughs> Many beautiful <laughs> mixed race children. Do you have anything to say? Um, <laughs> no, well, not thing to say. <laughs> a strange man. Um, yeah. oh, well, uh, thank you for your blessings, uh, sir. Yes. Um, but yes, sir. Uh, as, as my as my uh, fiance was, was saying, uh, a car, the hmm, about the cards. Yes. Yes. You are not members. Um, alas. <laughs> but, um, how does one gain, uh, membership? What is your credit rating again? Uh, it's like 90, right? That is my oh. highest skill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, we sent the right person to this place because he takes one look at you and he's like, it's no problem at all, sir. Um, you can just become a member. Um, we just would need to register your names and then have you pay the five pound fee. It would be 10 pounds since there is uh, two of you. Well, uh, certainly let the, let's, let the registration process begin, old man. Well, it's very simple and uh, quite painless. Uh, hold on. And he turns around and he grabs a little book. Uh, yes, so that will be 10 pounds. Give him the ten pounds. Um, yes, um, Vaughn 
uh, immediately produces that. And uh, in your name, sir? Yes, yeah, so the, uh, that's um, Von Villiers. Von Villiers. Very good. And you, madam. The future, Mrs. Villiers. Yes. I can't put Gibran, that in. The, the, the soon uh, Feyre's Gibran Villiers. Feyre's Gibran Villiers. Surely you will not hyphenate your name. We don't do that in the 1920s. <laughs> well, um, one never knows. Um, You're already pushing it with these mixed race children. <laughs> In Egypt, you would be stoned yeah, would for you? such a suggestion. <laughs> well, soaking up the atmosphere of Soho, I'm, I'm, I'm rather um, I'm becoming more bohemian by the moment. Who knows what hyphens might invade the our names? Yeah. Actually, fun fact. Sorry, I have to inter- interfere and just say, uh, <clears throat> at that time, in like even till now, like my mom didn't have to change her name. Like they generally keep their name. That, yeah, that makes owning. sense. So, just, sorry, just for, uh, just for. Thank to. you for the historical clarification. Thanks. I like my misogynist bouncer more. <laughs> 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 just gotta put that out there. <laughs> um, so you are members of the club with your Wonderful. real names written. Uh-huh. This piece of paper right there in that little book. We're out of towners, though. I think you'd be terribly hard pressed to find exactly where we are. Yes, we're newlyweds our on our way to Earth's capital. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you uh, you see that little book full of lots of names that he writes yours in, closes it up, and says, "Right this way. If you would just uh, proceed up the staircase, there'll be an elevator that will take you." the Blue Pyramid Club. Congratulations on your engagement. Uh, may your Thank lives you. be fruitful. Hmm. Again, I, not uh, not strange at all for yes. him to say any of this. Yes, capital. Uh, thanks for the well wishes, old Bean. And um, I'll sort of wave. Uh, um, I hope that you drink enough tonight to make love with it. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, Build up a, the nerve. What a unique, <laughs> unique character. But not too so much, it. Mr. Villiers, if you know what I mean. Not yes. too much. Yeah. So <laughs> invested in it can our affect you. It can affect like, you in the bedroom, Mr. Villiers. <laughs> this guy's this prodding me much. with his elbow. Vaughn just like grip, takes his elbow and pushes it down. Oh. <laughs> yes, right. Right, old chum. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you ever so much uh, for taking our registration. Ta! And um, we'll, Toodles. we'll waft up the stairs. You go up the stairs and you enter this club. Um... It is, uh, oh boy, there is a lot going on in here. There are um, belly dancers um, kind of like all over the place. There's, it's dark um, and there's the same motifs that you saw on the sign are decorated, decorated throughout the place. There's smoke, like a thin haze of smoke covering the entire place. There's a long curving bar for a moment. You kind of get taken back to the bar Cordano. It's not like that at all, but you just, you kind of can't see a bar now anymore without going back to that moment. Long bar. And there's people smoking out of hookahs. Every, everyone has a cigarette in their hand. The belly dancers have two while they're belly dancing. Um, just smoke everywhere. And uh, you might see, like, um, uh, as you walk in, there's a guy that's getting a little too intimate with one of the dancers. And a couple of security guys come over and squash that right away. And they give him a, they don't rough him up. They just give him a stern talking to. Although other guys you see being just as fresh with uh, another dancer. And they're not really getting talk to at all so there's just like a lot uh going on here and a maitre d' comes up and says oh welcome to uh, the blue pyramid club i uh, do not recognize perhaps i've seen you before he uh motions to Feyrus, but uh, you are new to me sir uh new members old man um but um shows to the uh, vacant table if one if one's here but of course, right this way, sir. Uh, and there, he's eyeing you up and down. That credit rating is all over you. It's like <laughs> that drip. Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, he brings you to a really nice uh, central table that's also quiet and kind of out of the way. It's central in, in terms of its location for you to see everything, but not be seen. And so he sits you down. Um, yes, a, a, a waitress will be with you uh, momentarily. Uh, please enjoy. Can I light your cigarettes? It is mandatory to smoke. <laughs> Yes, of course. Um, 
There you are. <laughs> so Charmed. sorry, madam. Let me get in there. All right, please enjoy. And the music is like... Um, rather too push-push from the gentleman at the door. If we weren't trying to keep a low profile and give him a piece of my mind. I don't know how one could possibly keep a low profile in here. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, looking- and I'll tell you, it's like all the clientele, it's like... As far as you can see, everyone is of uh, some Egyptian or Egyptian adjacent ascent, descent, ascent. Well, now what? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, so yeah, so we're taking the vibe, and it's the, it's the vibe is uh, revelry, um, par- party time. We're we're dancing, we're smoking, we're drinking. Um, yep, there's a coffee room um, as well as like the bar area. There's a drawing room. Like it's it's more of a uh, while while you kind of enter into the nightlifey portion, there are quieter areas like the coffee room and the drawing mm-hmm. room. So it's more of a social club. Great, rather a far um, cry from. The, the atmosphere of, of Juju House and the uh, and the and the garret of, uh, of Mr. Shipley. Um, <laughs> I wonder where but this I suppose is where all the victims were regulars at this club. Um, oh, do you think that might be correct? I hadn't thought about that before because I well, I wasn't sure what I was expecting upon arrival, but this wasn't it. Um, what do you say we we drunkenly meander about and see if we could overhear some conversations? Yes, let's see if we can make some friends. And uh, yeah, if we can kind of take our take our drinks, get up from our yeah, you get you order drinks from the server, and then you decide to. Uh walk around uh, maybe up to the bar Mm -hmm. you come up to the bar there's um, a a woman and a man another couple uh, sitting there Um, there's a man sitting by himself and then there's a bartender who's kind of getting dressed down by a a larger (laughs) man kind of a heavy set guy um, balding on top and uh, it looks like maybe he's the manager speaking uh, in another uh, language um, that uh, Feyruz would recognize and he's saying like and you need to you need to be you need to make sure that when their drinks are like low that you're asking them that they want another drink. Don't just sit there. You need to like make sure that you're constantly filling their drinks. Don't just da, 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 da. you see him uh, dressed down. He pulls out a, a handkerchief and is like wiping at his neck. And he's like, "Look, you're, you're wasting time right now. You got a new uh, new people right here. Um, they might, will be with you momentarily, sir." And he pushes the bartender over to you. Um, and he's like, they, 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 they have drinks. He's like, well, then offer them something else, food. <laughs> and he's like, um, are, do, 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 are you, are you folks all set? Do, do you need anything else? Uh, no, but I, I was curious to know what your most popular cocktail is here. Um, whatever the most popular cocktail in Egypt is right now, I think it's <laughs> called the Egyptian Kiss. Mm. That's the special <laughs> of the day. It's just triple sec <clears throat> on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, it's quite nauseating. Um, I want to look at that fellow who's sitting alone. Um, what's is it? He's sitting there and he's just Egyptian fellow, um, but uh, he's dressed like any other Brit. Lost in a reverie. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, there's the um, other couple and they just kind of smile at you. Um, yeah. Hmm. Should we ask about the Ferris? Was it Ferris Brothers? Ferris. Just drop the name. Uh, yeah. Um. You toss around the word Ferris and Sons to just people. Oh, Ferris and, and Sons. Yeah. No one really. No, it doesn't ring a bell to anyone. Um, they're like, what? We're just here to drink and have fun and drink triple sec. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. Um, if that's the case. <clears throat> What about? Think about what you know about this place or what you don't know. It's like, you know that there were all these Egyptian murders. You know that uh, most of the victims were members of this club. Um, and that obviously everything is tied up. There's something going on with Egypt because the Carlisle expedition is there. Maybe mm-hmm. that's related. Maybe it isn't. So now you're here now just kind of taking in the scene. And maybe that's part of the adventure. But if uh, what else are what you looking we, for? Yeah. What if we pose as... Uh, 
uh, academics from America who are, you know, we are, we are new archaeologists and maybe just want to hear about people's adventures. Hmm. Maybe we get somebody lick it up enough. Yes. Um, we might see if somebody might know something about these Carlisle expeditions or maybe know any of the stories that have been circulating. Or perhaps even something about the Brotherhood stories. of the Black Pharaoh. Um, and, uh, okay, great. Um, <laughs> Vaughn will... You can buy that gentleman a, a round of drinks. So we're posing as Americans, you say? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Just academics Excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh, pardon <laughs> me, sir. <laughs> yeah, no. um, uh, pardon me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how do you be? How are you an American uh, playing a Brit posing as an American? <laughs> just you can't just do your own accent. We're just uh, on here from our break from university. <laughs> uh, both of you, give me a luck roll here before you engage any of these people in conversation. Uh, promising. Oh no! Uh, not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear let's see 67 over 36 okay. uh, yeah, I, I got it 45 under 55 okay all right so um good to know you start talking to someone they're like oh hello where 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 are you from uh, are you from around here or from texas <laughs> 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 Tell him, darling. Uh, Vaughn is like, uh, mm, right, uh, right. Uh, well, sir, I'm from uh, D- Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm an oil man, you see. And when I'm not pumping black gold out of the ground, I'm a collector of antiquities far and wide. I'm looking... I'm curious if you know of any um, places where I might be able to see a um, some uh, famed Egyptian artifacts. I've been to the British Museum, but are there any uh, uh, better and more accommodating facilities? Well, surely you've uh, heard of the Penu Foundation. It is uh, the foremost institution for Egyptology in the world, perhaps. Um, uh, when I when I first uh, came here, I, I sought out employment there, but they were not hiring at the time. Um, but if it is Egyptian uh, uh, antiquities you are interested in, you you must make a stop to the Penu Foundation. Just don't now, go is that a place after where hours, we can... or you could get killed. <laughs> Now, is that a place where we can buy antiquities or look into antiquities for maybe some sort of exchange program for our university? I don't, do they, did they have a gift shop? No, I don't believe uh, anything is for sale there. It is for um, academic purposes. Yes, you study, for researchers. Oh, well, yeah, but he, as an old man, has the uh, the capital to to everything has a price? Of course. Yes, I have heard this is the American way. It is not so where I come from, and not so here uh, either. So, hey, good luck. Perhaps you can uh, uh, throw money at them they've never seen, and maybe you'd get access that others wouldn't. But I, I am just a simple uh, cab driver. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm not only in the this market... This was gifted to me. Ah. <laughs> for Christmas, which I don't even celebrate. I'm not only in the market for simply antiques, but I have a rather rarefied uh, uh, taste, you see. Um, I, I'm more into the, the, the esoteric and the uncanny. Um, I do not know what that means. <laughs> Um, well, sir, I mean the the old kingdom, and maybe even older. I, in my limited research, I've become rather uh, curious about this Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. The Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. What is that? Apparently, a brotherhood. <laughs> this is uh, a another club like the the Blue Pyramid. And uh, the girl that's sitting with him just, like, grabs his arm, and she's like, oh, come on, what are you talking? Let's get out of here. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm making friends. The Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh, I never heard of such a thing. What, what is this? What is this? I Now you've, you have my interest. All right. Um, 
So I'm, the impression that we're getting then is that this guy sincerely has never heard of this. Um, um, but who knows? Uh, you could do a roll, psychology. Yeah, roll some yeah. psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go when for it. When in doubt. When in doubt. Roll some roll bones. Can we both uh, do yeah. a sense check here? Yeah, because one of you may I... not pick up on it. You can talk about it later. I got a 98. <laughs> I can spend some. <laughs> what is your psychology? It? Bring it down. My psychology is low. It's like a 25. All right, so that's it's a all those, uh, it's all yeah. those Egyptian oh. kisses. <laughs> Yeah. If it's under 50, uh, 96 to 100 is a, is a fumble. All right, so you, you fumble on your psychology. We'll worry about that in a second. What oh, about old, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. okay. Um, uh, I'm going to spend 12 points of luck to bring it, it down to, the, to, a, to a regular success. Okay. Um, he genuinely seems uh, like... He has no idea what you're talking about. Although the, right. the woman seemed to sort of, the timing of her, like, let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're just mm-hmm. being paranoid. That did seem a little weird. Is um, she an employee or she's? I uh, know like, she, she looks like she's like his date or wife or girlfriend. You don't see a wedding ring. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so however, um, Feyruz fumbled. Here's what I'll say is like when he said, the brother of the black hair, he was a little loud about that. Now, maybe you wanted that to happen or not, um, but you do feel like, ooh, that, maybe we should chill. Yeah. yeah. The brother of the black pharaoh. I've never heard of such a thing. What is this, a group that kills Egyptians? <laughs> and uh, I guess because it's a, because it's a fumble, uh, I'll probably just like mutter in Arabic under my breath like this was fun useless like why did we even like why why are we why, texas and then but mm-hmm. when i that um what did you say am i able to when when he says that really loudly take a look around and see who like really notices that we said that give me a little spot hid yeah and that's that's the way success baby all right so you succeed on the spot hidden and you looked like oh shit did anybody hear that and uh, you look around and you do notice that one of the belly dancers like is looking and then looks back. She heard and, that. And uh, oh, oh, esteemed keeper, I, I got a hard success on my spot hit. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So as he said that you both kind of looked. Um, so you notice also that she made, uh, once she saw you see her, she looked back. So she knows that you saw her. Okay, and she great. just keeps dancing. Um, just please keep going. Yeah, there we go. Great, <laughs> yeah, great. get the tassels <laughs> involved. She's so really immersed. getting into it. And, uh, and then I will, and then I will look, uh, like, easy there, friend. Uh, I, I know it's loud in here, but you needn't bring your voice over the din. I, I shan't know what to do if people come to, <laughs> to give you the bum's rush out of here. Uh, I'm sorry, I never heard such a thing before. It sounds very exciting. The Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. I like it. No, what is it? <laughs> oh, uh, it's another club. Another club? Well, perhaps my uncle will gift me a membership to that one as well. Is that how you got in here? Yes, yes. My uncle owns the cab company that I work for. He's a rich man. The richest man in all of Egypt. You don't say. Yes. Well, uh, I, oh, maybe sorry, we shouldn't my, keep you. My young lady here, she I have to keep up with her as best I can. We're going to go. Um, but it was nice meeting you both. Uh, good luck with your brotherhoods and your Texas and your and everything you do. <laughs> yes, g- good luck to you, partner. And um, right. <laughs> uh, wave him away. Now, a dancer won't be dancing all night. I want to, like, well, I'll just put it out there that if we see, like, this number coming to a close and they're going to depart to a backstage area, I would like to intercept. Although uh, I, I, have, I have an idea, though. Great. If you don't mind, if, if you know, we could also try, we could try both, both uh, things. Um, but darling, do you have uh, a roll of singles on you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna be the drunk uncle at every Arabic wedding. <laughs> I so rarely carry uh, small bills. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and 
yeah, perhaps a few pound notes can exchange hands here. Sure. Yeah. And uh, as I grab that, I'll uh, Jane Jetson style. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to dance my way over and just kind of like make it rain for a little bit and also kind of like join in and dance and um, I'll right. just go ahead. You're just gonna walk. You're gonna kind of walk over there with Vaughn literally gonna walk over, behind. dance, dance over to her, make it rain, continue dancing. And as you're like getting close to her, she kind of s- you, you feel like she feels you coming or sees you coming, and she kind of um, scurries off. And before you can intercede, the balding guy who is like the manager kind of steps in front of you and is like, "Can I help you with something? I, I, um, I don't mean to uh, be rude, but." Uh, I, uh, someone has said you are bothering the customers, and so I must ask you, um, what, uh, you are new here. Yes? You are a new member? Yes. Um, it is best to, uh, perhaps keep a low profile, especially, um, as you are, uh, not from around here, it seems. Oh, I just thought this was a... I mistook the vibe of this place. I, I thought this was a Indeed you I did. thought this was a proper party, but I see that it's kind of tame. Well, maybe that's how they do th- maybe it's a little subdued over here. It is proper in the sense that we have uh, decorum. We don't just throw money around and, and bother the other patrons. Um, so please, uh, and Vaughn, maybe you're yep. catching up at this point. Uh, yes. I was just telling your uh, associate here. Um, fiance. Oh, fiance. Um, to uh, please uh, to leave the other customers alone and uh, we, do not, <laughs> we do not throw money all over the place. You may hand it to the dancers. They appreciate those tips, but uh, please, this is a fine establishment. Apologies there, friend. Didn't mean to step out of line or cause any hubbub. <laughs> um, no problem at all. Um, just, we mid- uh, misread the atmosphere. Uh, that's on me, partner. Um, any chance I could make apologies to the lady in question? <laughs> um, I just uh, a couple of people mentioned that you were uh, being bothersome. It is fine. Just maybe go back to your table. And uh, in fact, I will send a round of drinks over. Just uh, in- in- enjoy the rest of your night. If I'm loud and disruptive, uh, it's only because I am an American man. Uh, that is uh, painfully clear. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, great, so I'll. Well, that didn't work, did it? Well, despite my impeccable imitation of your uh, of one of your native sons, I think uh, yes, that all sort of got cocked up, didn't it? So... Um, although I did notice that that um that, that dancer g- cast us the eye as soon as the. Uh, the black fellow is mentioned. She did, and I thought I would be able to make my way over and maybe get a little word, but apparently my charm skill is a 15. <laughs> 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 there was no chance that that was going to Damn. happen. Um, perhaps I can... I know, uh, there must be some... Now, did this did this dancer now... Go, you said she skittered away? Is she she um, kind of skittered away. Um, and there's just there's a lot going on in here. Right, so, right. you know, you bide your time, maybe you'll see her again, or maybe you scared her off. Great. Um, then let's bide our time, keep the low profile as suggested, unless uh, Ferris has another I- idea. And if uh, she pops out, we can just go to her, or we can, or some other thing. Okay, you sit down at the table, and the server comes over. Um, can I uh, uh, get you another round? Uh, this one is on the house. Is this that uh, popular drink? that you spoke of, or is this what we ordered in the first place? Um, it's up to you. I'm, I'm taking your order right now. Do you want uh, no. Egyptian kisses? <laughs> no, I'm an American fellow, so I'll have a gin fizz, please. Gin fizz, and for the lady? I suppose I will have the same. Oh, shit. I, I suppose I will have the same. <laughs> All right. Your accents are hideous. Um, well, I you will... know, just as soon as I got off that boat, it's, you know, the accent... I pick up accents so quickly. Gin fizz, gin fizz. All right, coming right up. She leaves and she comes back and she places um, two napkins on the table and she puts your drink, Feyruz, on uh, one napkin and then she takes your drink, 
Vaughn and uh, places it on the napkin, but then slides the drink over to you with the napkin. And she goes, um, here you are, sir. And she looks down at the napkin. Much obliged. I look down at the napkin as well. And there's a note on it. Mm-hmm. We go back to the Penhu Foundation. The rain is picking up, and you're I can't standing see outside. shit through this pantyhose right now. <laughs> the <fucking> rain <laughs> is all over this thing. I you were a professional. Did you I know I'm a professional when it's not raining. Do you know how what rain looks like in a pantyhose? <laughs> Wearing wet yes. pantyhose. It's also part of it was like in the twenties. Would this be silk? Is this like? Oh, look at this. I can't breathe. I'm like a silk oh, cloud. Right, all right. You could say, take it. Shh, take it off. Oh, this is storm bad cloud take it off. on my face. <laughs> I take it off. Shit. All right, so you take the soaking wet pantyhose off your face, <gasps> and you're standing behind this uh, door. You're worried there might be an alarm. How do you approach this? I'd like to do a spot hidden for an alarm. Same. Okay. Mm. All right, so you're both looking at her. Any telltale signs of uh, an alarm? Yep. I don't know if there is one or not. I got a 31 <laughs> over 28. I will Oof. spend three points. Okay. For success. You don't see any sort of wiring. Um, I mean, this is very, you guys are very suited for where you went. One looking affluent and a cat burglar to try and break in here. You, you've broken into places before. Now, things might be different over here, but you have no indication that there is an alarm here. Right. However, the door is locked. Okay, well, that's... Shit. Of course. No, I mean, this is par for the course at buildings. If I lock every door, <laughs> just lock one door. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, who knows what they're guarding here. All right, let's try to, uh... Let's try to jimmy this, uh, lock here. Okay, give me a locksmith roll. Your third of the episode. Uh, and it's a 10. <laughs> oh, Under man. 48. So that's a hard... It's almost an extreme. Nice with, uh, with ease, you pop that open. And standing before you is this long hallway. You know that um, Kinnery's office is two doors to the left, which leads directly into Gavigan's office. Uh-huh. Um, and then there are several other doors, one of which you know is the library. And, of course, right to your direct left is that red door that seemed to jump out at you. Yeah. And, and we're... What, oh, what window did we notice the flashlight in on the first floor? Make it um, in front of. It, as, the, as if you're assuming their rounds were happening, it was systematic. Like, each room was being Oh, checked. each room. Okay. Yeah, the light came on. So it room. would, like, even go into, like, the different offices. It would, like, go... All the way through into Gavigan's mm-hmm. office. It'd Open come up back the door. Up. Check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There were. Um, yeah. That's what you know. Okay. I'm seeing doors that connect. Is this Gavigan's office? What, yeah. Gavin's- that's actually a bookcase. Like oh. the, the okay. kind of, some things that almost everything looks like a door is a door, but some are a <laughs> window, it. some are a okay. bookcase. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's go to this red door. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're timing this. Attempting to time this well with knowing where the light would be roughly right now. Right. Trying to figure out where this night watchman, if there is only one night watchman, where he is. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, great. Both of you give me a listen roll. Okay. It's a, it's a 76 over 24. I got a okay. 38 under 63. All right. So, Carter, you're listening. Really professional. I'm a professional listener. You, you hear footsteps upstairs. Okay. All right, they're upstairs. Or maybe just one is upstairs. How do you know that? I just am attuned right wow. now. I'm in the zone. That's so once cool. We, once I can breathe, it's a whole different story. This oh. thing not on my head. Okay. Well, uh, so the red door first, or? Yeah, let's do the red door. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try to open this door. Is it locked? It is locked. For fuck's sake. Okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> got it. I've got some luck left still. Let's go. I'm going to locksmith this door. Unless I can charm it. The charm the door. Hey, door. <laughs> Where are you I've never seen a red door before. Fresh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're not from around here. It's finally... Oh, no, a seven. <laughs> fuck yeah! A seven. Damn. I thought it was a 70. It's a seven. 
under 48. Wait, so is that extreme? That's extreme. Because seven times five is something that's under 48. (laughs) That's true. It's 35. (laughs) Um, Holy shit. Okay. You unlock the door. You unlock the door. I'm inspired right now. I don't know what to say. And I feel alive. This is amazing. You unlock the door. um, However, you like go to open it and there's like, you, you, you open it a little bit, but there's like a bunch of shit behind it. And as you continue to push, it's like loud. <laughs> like there's been stuff that's been is- pushed up against the door. <sighs> and you're worried that if you continue pushing, you're going to draw attention to yourself. But you can do it. It's just, I'm just trying to explain what the situation is because it's like... <sighs> Okay, all right, all right. Hold Boxes on. or shit? Why would they put, how could you put something up against a door that you're coming in and out of? There must be something in there. Unless there's another way into the room. Um, how much more, like another push or two to where one of us can fit through it and it it's pretty I'd, loud? I'd say that uh, you guys could squeeze through with like two more pushes. Um looking through my sheet I'm like is there like like a pig grease roll <laughs> just to make it well, more I'm pig grease you, slippery yeah. <laughs> so specific why is it's it coming from a pig it's gonna be I a hard know. success on a pig grease roll no uh, you can try and stealth. mitigate the situation um, but otherwise it's gonna be a stealth roll if there's something you're doing to mitigate it tell me and I'll, it might change the success that's needed but we're looking at like, uh, stealth rolls and like the way that you push on the door like pushing from maybe the bottom instead of where the handle is so that you have more leverage and make it less squeaky. Yeah, it's just there's like crates and boxes piled like high over the door. How could someone get out of this room with stuff blocking the door? How indeed. Unless those bookcases that I magically remembered are a a way or, or a facade. So maybe let's head into Gavigan's office. But do do, can... do we leave this door unlocked? Yes, we just close it. Is that possible, the, Troy? Just close it, have it stay open. In case yeah. we're if the guards it. come back, won't they know? Or I guess they're not coming in. No, they're not going this. in. It's locked. Mm. They're not going to check. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go okay. to the office. All right, let's try to go to Gavigan's office. All right, so oh, can, I'll move your pawns, but you guys can move your pawns if you want. First, if you... this door's fucking locked. Yeah, it is unlocked. Um, yeah, okay, you get... thank God. You get into Mr. Kinnery's office, and okay. you you make some sort of joke about what was the name of this guy that was in here? <laughs> God, remember when we came out of here and there was just a stranger sitting here? There was another man here, <laughs> and uh, huh. obviously he's not there. And then there is the door to Gavigan's office. What do you do? How do we go in? Is it okay. locked? Uh, it is unlocked. Oh, uh, sick. Let's go Whoa. in. <laughs> All right, so now you're in Gavigan's office. You were here before speaking yeah. with him. You remember you, there was a safe on the floor. There's yep. also like, it's his fucking desk and everything. So what do you um, what do? You do? Well, let's, uh, let's check the, let's check these bookcases. Yeah. I'm gonna spot hidden this, this adjoining wall to this room. I wanna try to get into his mind to figure out where he would put the combination for the safe. <laughs> <laughs> if I were Gavigan. Uh, all right, so give me a spot hidden. Can we both do this, please, God? Because yes. I have a 28. <laughs> Seven. Seven under 69. Yep. Y'all are rolling fire. 75. No, I've been rolling like crap, oh, and then I get like one yeah. good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good, because I failed it. Um. Okay, so... You examine the bookcases based on Carter's crazy theory that there must be another way in and maybe it's behind those bookcases that were behind Gavigan's desk. And there's like three cases in a row and the middle one like pops open and moves on a hinge. And just behind that is like a small little hallway with another single door. Oh shit. Oh God. Okay, all right. You were right. Oh. I was totally right. Oh my God, I thought I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I mean, yeah, no, I knew 100%. 100%. Um, okay, let's go in here. Should we try the safe first or? 
Yeah, because now we, so, yeah, let's do that in case you remember we hear dinner, anybody. Remember, Dinner was very interested in the safe. Yeah, yeah, let's check the safe real quick. Okay, the safe. It's wide open. It's locked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Feyrus. Uh, I'm not Feyrus. Shit, Margo. Yes. I'm remembering the last time. Uh, I need some luck here, okay? Okay. Send um, me your positive German thoughts, which I'm sure all Germans are full of. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I'm sorry. 45 under 48. Motherfucker. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you unlock the safe. And inside you find a packet of white one pound notes. Um, all with Gavigan's handwritten signature on the reverse. Um, if you quickly count them, uh, it's about a hundred pounds. It's about five hundred bucks. Um, all drawn by Gavigan from a London bank, and that's all that's in there. It's just cash. Okay. Wait. They, but you sign it. How does that work? Is it like they're like little checks with? Um, I think it's all. Ha- you're saying his signatures on it. Yeah, his handwritten signature on the reverse. reverse. I'm, I'm not wise enough to know how British. So it's got to be like works. a check, kind of. Like he's endorsed. I think a one pound note is different than a one one pound. I think they're probably like IOUs. Uh, okay. The Bank of England one pound note was a sterling bank note, um, issued from the Bank of England. Yeah, I just don't know enough about British currency. I read that section of the the chapter once, and I was like, ah, it's just. It's 500 bucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, never it's basically, this. the point of this is there's nothing strange about it at all. Okay, right. All right. Well, I can't there's take no- this. I can't take any of this either because it's got his fucking signature on it. Great. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else in there? It's just, it's just money? It's just money. Bummer. Okay, that's fine. Let's just close this up. Spin the dial. Uh, all right, let's go examine the secret room. Secret room. Okay. And we got to um, kind of... I want to make sure we can the 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 bookcase. Does it look like uh, if it were to shut, there's like a knob or something to open it? Like I don't want to trap ourselves in here. No, it like just moves on a hinge. There's like a slight little. So you just gotta uh, push it. Push. Yeah, you can pull it back so that you hide yourselves in there okay. if you want. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure we don't trap ourselves in there. Okay. Um. So you're like in this tiny little closet and it's pitch dark and the, but you can see where the door is once you've closed yourself in. Yeah. Gavigan's office on the other side. His desk is uh, the safe you slide in here and that door is unopened i mean unlocked obviously it's unopened great oh it's tight in here Ooh. yeah i just don't know if he's just a friend why did he f- like come all the way to the united states do you know what i mean like why would he make the trip oh he's in love with me okay that's what i figured <laughs> that's, definitely yeah. yeah that's obvious to both I sing. of us uh, yeah no okay well it's uh, you know Congratulations. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go to this door. You go to the door. You open it. Mm-hmm. And it's very dark inside. However, there's still, as your eyes adjust to the darkness, you do see that it's just like, there's, it seems like there's boxes piled up, some all the way to the ceiling, crates, a thin layer of dust over everything. It's actually like the minute you open the door, the movement of the door like kicks up dust. <laughs> but you can't see shit. It is pitch black. Okay. Got a little Zippo here. Ah, yep. yes. Light, light, light a little lighter. Okay. You pop some lighters and you can see it doesn't look like anyone's been in here for some time from the dust. That's pretty obvious. Um, you do didn't see, we the see other... people. Didn't we see people go into the red door the other day? No, no oh. the door, that, that door was, you just noted like, that's where there's a red door. Oh, okay. um, and you can see that the door that you were trying to open. Now there's a bunch of boxes that have been slightly moved. Uh-huh. You probably kicked up dust from doing that as well, but everything's blocked. However, in the like mess of this room, there's been a very careful pathway made in the boxes so that someone could enter from this secret door and move about. And they, 
the direction, uh, basically the the pathway, all goes up to um, a mummy case. Oh, for fuck's sake! Um, <laughs> there is a mummy case lying in the sort of north eastern portion of the room. It's in pretty poor condition, lying on its back um, on the floor. And everything else is just kind of in the way, except a pathway has been created to this mummy case lying on the floor. All right, so it's clearly traffic goes straight to the mummy case. Yeah. And unlike everything else in the room, the mummy case appears to be free of dust. And it's worn. Um, does it look like it was put in here recently? Or just that it's maybe being used? You, you bring the Zippo down to the floor to see if there's like marks of this being dragged in or pulled in. There's no indication as to when it was brought in. If anything, it just looks like it has been used in some way or handled. Or, or like taken care of to not get dusty? Or taken care of, um, whereas everything else hasn't been it almost just looks like it's decor decorative um all right how about how about taking a look at the uh the types of footprints or okay. tracks maybe this is what isn't there some skill for this? Is there like a survival or something um, there was like track at track is a track, track? Oh, yeah God. can be track just to see if it's like the same set of footprints or is there like mummy mummy footprints right like like one seven toed foot per- yeah this is not a great skill for me I'm not gonna lie yeah that's not gonna no, let's not even get into it it's yeah it's not a fumble I know that you, you certainly see footprints in the dust but it's uh, you can't determine how many people or if there are other sorts of creatures but they kind of go back mm. and forth and meander to this sarcophagus and then back <sighs> to the door well is I think this... we got all the information we need we could probably no. get going what no we must. Look at the... We're looking the, at it right now. There it is. We need to go take a closer look. I want to go up to it carefully, slowly, mm-hmm. and you got that, you got like that look shotgun. at any that markings shotgun. that are... What, you going to shoot a mummy? Oh, we've done it before. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I, I, I want to I look at the outside of it and see, like, can I discern okay. anything? Anything jump out of you? Give me a spot hidden. Spot hidden, please. Oh, it's a it's a ninety no. over sixty nine. So it's too many too many bits for my luck. Okay, you can try to push, but obviously, high risk. I high do want to. Yeah, I feel like this is the moment. I want to push it. Um, I'm getting maybe overwhelmed with like everything else in the room, and with Carter not wanting to do this, so I'm okay. distracted. And then I just try to shush shush, and I try to focus more and just really look at okay. everything. I have the failed push condition in my head. So. Oh, God. Ten. Oh, yes. or wait, yeah. wait. Oh. Wait, what did you roll? We've, I fucked this up on episode one of season two. It's, uh, a, it's a ten on the tens and then a face on the that's a, on the singles. That's a zero, What is the right? face? That's a zero? That's a, the zero, yeah. All right, so that's, yeah, a so that's a ten. Yeah. That's a ten, not a one hundred. Three zeros is a one hundred. I think I misspoke okay. in the first episode uh, oh. of this season. You rolled a ten, which is at least a hard, if not extreme. Under sixty-nine. Yeah. yeah, that's extreme, oh, baby. Man. Sometimes I have good push failures in my head. And sometimes <laughs> I don't. I had a real good one. Mm, Here's what you notice. Feel. You're. Oh, what do you do different though? What do you do different? Um, it was. Like I was getting distracted by Carter and maybe everything else in the room. So I just really like, I shush him up and I just really like try to methodically look at everything and go up and down and try to like see if there's a story. Um, Maybe at first you didn't touch it, you know? And now Mm -hmm. you're like, you really dig in and you start touching it, okay? And you start like, what is is going on here? Do you try to open it? Am I compelled to want to open it? Well, the spot yeah, hidden. Like wait, hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's slow down here. The spot. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, the spot hidden was just to check if anything was crazy with tell it me, before I'm, opening it. Uh, right, it? right. It's up to you. you if if th- you don't want to open, it, if you're just kind of really, I mean, she's probably going to open it. Let's be yeah, like, honest. Yeah, like I feel like I wanted to like check the vibe of the sarcophagus. <laughs> check the vibe of the sarcophagus, <laughs> and 
when you get to the face of the mummy, right, that's lying there, this image of a mummy, it's like a, you know, like almost like a bas relief, the way it's three dimensional. You notice that the eyes, like, give a little. Whereas the rest of the case is completely solid and hard. When you run your hands over the face of the mummy, the eyes, like, have a little give to them. And I just want to be clear, this is a sarcophagus. So yeah, it's, like, it's like a coffin with it's all like painted. A, yeah, with a, you know, like a kind of a pharaohy type. Right, face. right. So the yeah. painted the painted eyes, like, have a give to them. Have a give to them, like they can be pressed. Like buttons. Um, I feel like I mess with them a little bit since I'm touching it and I'm like pressing gently. Okay, I think we got, we got the gist of it. The eyes move. I think we can go. No, Carter, I really want to open the sarcophagus. I feel like okay. Margot's in this space where, like, she hasn't really lost any max sanity. Her power's really big, and she's, like, been through some stuff, but I feel like she feels way too overconfident at the same time. Yeah, um, yeah makes sense. And I want to open it. All right. You go to open the sarcophagus, and it doesn't budge at Ooh. all. Yes. You just like, you don't know if you just don't have the strength to move it. Like it's a, Carter, help what, me. But it just doesn't move at all. It's Seems not so opening. Locked. Okay. Is um, there like um, like a like a puzzle to open it? Something with the squishy you, eyes. It seems like the eyes are the only thing that have any give whatsoever on this structure. Is there anything around that looks like it should be put in there? Oh. Your fingers. <laughs> My fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I think? Spot hidden yeah. on your hand. You look like a, you're like a key shaped object or something that fits in or the no, socket I mean of like, the eye. No. Yeah, yeah, in the eyes. No, you don't see anything. Um, but you yes. know that you have the ability to depress them. Okay. I slowly depress them more and more and more. Slowly. You don't have to go too far before you hear clink clink. And then you hear this like, like an electric motor. And the lid of the sarcophagus like slides off on its axis and down. And within the chamber is a staircase (gasps) leading underneath the building. And we go back to the Blue Pyramid Club. Thank you ever so much for the drink. Thank you for the drink. (sighs) You are most welcome, the woman says, and she leaves. You look down at the napkin, and it says, wait till you hear what this says. (laughs) Fuck. It says, um, meet me down the street under the arches after the Blue Pyramid Club closes. I put that into my rest pocket. Um, They close at 1 a.m. You remember the sign coming in was like 6 to 1 a.m. or something. Right. Um, What time is it now, roughly? Uh, It's probably like 12, 15. Great. Um, It's like well, I don't know about you, dear, but I think this might be our last round. Why are you talking like that to me? <laughs> <laughs> just because there are people around, I guess. I'm just trying to get a handle no, no. on the ex. Vaughn's just lost in the sauce of this character. He loves this guy. Um, <laughs> I, <clears throat> I'm talking like that to you because I'm worried about being overheard. Oh, oh but, um, right, right. The, um, that, that woman just uh, sent me a little missive. And I'll slide it across the table to to, to Feyruz. Act casual, opens it up. You see the same how, thing. How much time do we have? About 45 minutes. All right, well, I suppose we could wrap this up and not do anything else to draw attention to ourselves. I am sorry my plan backfired horrendously. Oh, no. Um, I, I think... I think we, we operated rather well, considering the circumstances. Um, 
It's, it's a rare sort that's impervious to, to these charms, but it seems to be happening more and more. <sighs> All right, then. Well, this is really promising. And What do you want to do afterwards? Do you want to... Do you, do you, what do you suppose telling Hast and Margot gotten themselves into? Well, hopefully they've just stood about the perimeter and noted the goings on inside. I can't imagine they've actually gone in that place. <laughs> right, God. right, right. It would be insane to go into that place. Yes. I'm sure they've made the sensible decision. Yes. Um, we're in the information gathering phase of this little investigation. But, um, right. But this, uh, this lead here shows great promise. Yes. It seems as though the staff of this place, um, did you see the fear in her eyes when, when, we, when, that, when that fellow bellowed the, the name of that brotherhood out? She did look rather uncomfortable. Yes. And might I say the date of that gentleman we were speaking to? She, her reaction didn't sit well with me at all. Yes, we're... We're walking into a, a thicket of cross purposes and we must tread lightly. Right. Um, but yeah, so we've... I suppose we've got um, 30 or so minutes to finish our drinks and <laughs> go down to the archers. Yeah. And as Feyruz takes a look at her drink and is wondering, like, I hope nobody poisoned this. <laughs> <laughs> you drink your cocktail, your gin fizz, washes over your tongue in a delightful ginny way. Hmm. And you no sit such there thing. as <laughs> as the music uh, continues thumping, and you look around at everyone with that same feeling you always get. Kind of feel like you're right back in New York when you were in the thick of it. There, it's like everyone watching you as well. Uh, you're just like, are they watching you because you're a little out of place? Are they watching you because you've uh, given up your? Uh, your guys a little bit you're not sure but all eyes seem to be on you and eventually you leave the club and walk around um it's still raining out you've got your parasol and you're uh, are you moving furtively towards there to kind of not draw attention to yourself or are you just like yes going out for a stroll i don't want a tail so we may take a circuitous route and watch okay. our backs a little bit Right. No reason to be stealthy. You just kind of take, maybe live a little bit earlier so you can get there by one. A little and saunter. Take, take a little saunter around the neighborhood. You know, it's a beautiful rainy night. Why not? And uh, eventually you see this archway she was speaking of. And uh, in addition to the moonlight, there's sort of like a shaft of light coming from a, I don't know if they had street lights or gas lamps. It's just like shining down. Um, so you uh, go under there and you wait, and a couple minutes later, you see a small, slender figure um, walking towards you, and she has long, flowing, dark hair, which is wet. She doesn't have any um, umbrella or anything, but she's not scurrying towards you. She's just kind of walking slowly with her eyes down, and um, and then she gets over to you, and uh, she says, here, come come under here and she kind of pulls you just around the arch so that you're now in complete darkness she says come come so we won't be seen they watch they see who are you who are you my name is Yalesha Yalesha Esam she's like 19 years old, 18, young, um, very pretty, um, but like a deep sadness in her uh, in her face and in her look. She's like, We are interested parties, uh, Mrs. Sam. A, fr a friend of ours was on the trail of the Brotherhood that I believe you heard. Ah, Sam. Yes. They, they killed Badru. My boyfriend. They killed him when he unwittingly threatened one of them for making advances against me. The club, sometimes the men get a little handsy. Yes. And um, he, he didn't like that. And I think that is why he was killed. Well, 
I, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, yes. Our friend has passed away along with a few other people. But we are just wondering if there's any connection at all. I'm sure that being what you've been through and if there is anything that you know or have seen or have heard that we would like to seek some sort of justice for if these things are connected. Yes. Justice. Yes. Vengeance as well. They are evil. Pure evil. This brotherhood. I, I don't doubt it, Mrs. Song. The, the net of the of Scotland Yard is closing ever so slowly about them. But we have confronted an organization like this before, and we are just beginning to grapple with it here. We, we are not deputized by the constabulary, but we've been chosen by a higher power to do combat with it. From any information that you have about, about the nature of this brotherhood, where, where they meet, who they are, who their associates are, what their goals are, will be of immense use to us. Anything She's like, that we could unravel at this point. You hear a sound that's like, ta 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 and she looks and she like jumps. She's like, I cannot stay long. It is dangerous for all of us. I tell you, they know, they see, they are probably watching us right now, but I will tell you what I know. There is a um, truck that comes to the club uh, once a month, right around midnight before we close. And about two dozen or so customers, they climb in to this truck. They are all members of this brotherhood and they are led by a woman named Zara Shafiq. She is the mastermind behind it all. Of that I am sure. And, 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 and she is the one that calls the shots at the club, not Abdul. Um, he is a puppet and lives in fear of her and the wrath of the brotherhood. One night, I snuck out of work early. I had one of the other girls cover for me and I watched this van. I watched them to see where they went. And I think they drive somewhere out of London. At one point, I, 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 I lost them in the fog. The fog seemed to overwhelm me and they disappeared. But I'm certain they were heading outside of London. That I know. And that is all I can say. Please, is, is vengeance. This van, is this van marked at all in any way? I, I do not know. I do not know. I just, I know they come and they take them. I do not remember markings. Please, vengeance for Badru. You must, you must help. No one else will help. We are all in what, danger. Is it a regular occurrence when this, when this truck comes? What day of the month? Once a month. The third, um, uh, the third Tuesday of every month, I believe. I'm not sure, but I must go. Please, please help me. And she, she scurries away. Yeah, thank you. Into the darkness, and you're left standing there as the rain falls down and the moon seems to laugh at you. God. It's Zara Shafiq. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. I've said enough. I've, I've said, said too much. Another, another evil shopkeep. Oh, shades of silence in the this corner. Time we, <laughs> Just one this goddamn time we know. Place. It's always the evil shopkeep. <laughs> My goodness gracious, always split the party. <laughs>